Welcome to my shop. This is Jim, Saw Logs Plastic Hubs. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, we're working on a project. Come along, have fun. Uh, today's video is not about the tapping machine. It's this metal plate you see underneath it. This metal plate is an idea I had to solve a problem that I've run into. Uh, when I'm drilling and using the tapping machine and using my porter band, <coughs> they move. So they need to be fastened to the table workbench, but I don't want to tie up my workbench. I mean, you know, that's just so to give me the space I needed and be able to pull stuff out, work on it, I decided to cut <coughs> this plate right here and make it fix it today. Not a, not a real complicated job I had the plate laying around here. So basically it's just a, a, a 16th inch steel plate. I drilled and tapped holes, two holes here in the front. One here, one there that matches the two front legs and the swag. All it needs to do is keep removing. And then the three holes for this little drill press. A uh, hand drill press to hold the tapping machine. So that way it's done. Everything is drilled. The plates are drilled with quarter twenty. Excuse me, and got bolts in the bottom. So that's today's project, <coughs> and it's just another addition to the shop to make things work a little better. So you know, I knocked this out in a little bit of time today, and it's just one of them quickies. And you have a great day. Well, we enjoy the video too, by the way. Okay, let me back up a little bit. I'm doing this handheld because this is the start of a project. One of the things that I've noticed about my uh, swag table, it needs to be bolted. A couple of videos you see me to stick wood screws down the bench. Well, I'm not really a fan of this. So, what I've decided to do is I'm going to take a little plate of steel and I'm going to make a plate similar to what my vices and stuff sit on and mount it to the workbench. And then we can bolt the as needed put screws in i'm going to do the same thing with the tapping machine too to raise this back up and then we'll use the same plate the tapping machine's a lot smaller so it's just set the inside so that's going to be the plan and that's what we're working on all right again you know how it is necessity is always the mother invention so what we're going to do here let me get this off this cutting board we're going to i've got a plate that i had outside and i like this idea better so I'm going to take this plate and I'll do it more solid right there. Now I'm gonna just take it, me. I'm gonna go get my little cutoff tool and off camera finish this. Cause I I'd rather do that. Excuse me. Let me point this down. You see, I got it to here to here. So I'm gonna take my little cutoff tool and get the rest of it. Probably do that off camera. Okay. So there's what we got. And uh, yeah, that's a fairly simple thing. We're gonna take us up. I'm just going to, I'm going to get me a transfer punch, pop a couple holes. I'm only going to put two bolts in this in the front for this. And the plan is I'm going to drill the holes and bolt them. I'm going to line these up a little better. I just now noticed that I wanted these to be approximately the same. Kind of, you know, to keep it looks like it's somewhat it knows what the heck they're doing. And pretty darn close it's not perfect it's 
That's about, about close enough. Sideball close is all I'm after, and I'm trying to square these up on the front there and even them up. We're going to knock us a couple transfer holes in it. And let it be. Because this is what I'm going to do. Is this is basically going to bolt to the, to the front of the table. I'm going to grab a pair of ice grips first. Yuns had not seen me on the camera, I don't think, in all my YouTube videos, use this little Craftsman Bench Drill Cruise. Well, you're going to see me use it once I put the drill in the right way. But the... the I, this is the first drill press that I bought myself. Um, and I bought this drill press from Sears when I was working at, uh, when I was living in I, ha I did not have a drill press for the longest time and I bought this one at, from Sears I'll hold a few minutes I gotta do some adjusting and I, I, this is like the very first drill press I ever owned and I've really really have used it and we're going to drill these a quarter twenty. The main reason for the quarter twenty decide to do it in quarter twenty is a simple thing. I need a little bit of wiggle room for the the uh, mounts. And I'm going to tap these quarter twenty, and we're going to we're going to take the bottom of these and weld nuts onto it. Let me champ from. Uh, let me let me spot the camera's running. I'll just raise it up to the other drill press to carry you right over here. And this is the one that uh, belonged to my sweetheart's late husband, I presume. And uh, she, uh, it was in this building. It's another bench press. And that's just a welding, that's just a welded knockoff. That's, one that I had in here doing other things and just knocked right off here. These D bird and all right. Let me get find my quarter twenty. A quarter twenty tap will run through this. All right. Let me zoom in. close enough there uh, so what you're seeing there is you see now it's got the screws in I'm only going to put two because all this is for to keep this from moving so now what I'm going to do is take these screws out and I'll eventually I'm going to put the screw a quarter to 20 nuts back in this and then we're going to drill them out for and we're going to we're not going to drill them we're going to weld nuts in the bottom this whole assembly will bolt to the bench when it's finished We'll drill recesses in the bench too. So <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and take these out because I got to fix the other one. And I'll point it out. What I done was drill and tap this hole. This one and this one. I center punched them and then I took a hand drill and I basically drilled them and marked them. So that way I'm able to be closer. I'm going to probably go ahead with that press and go one size bigger with it to give it some slop room too because. You know, that way it's got a little wiggle room. Same thing, we're going to drill all these out quarter twenty. Now there you see, we have all three of these bolts in. So what the plan for this is, is simple. This way I have this bolt, I have one plate that I can bolt each one of these two fixtures to. Depending on what I need to do. What I'm going to do is mount this to the bench. Once this is mounted to the bench and screwed to the bench, I'm going to actually drill holes in the bench. We'll bring you along. And it's going to get a paint job and a few other things. I got the next step now is going to be to weld the nuts to the bottom. And I'm be honest, I don't show much welding videos. I don't want to embarrass myself. All these high quality welders that's on eBay, people like Jim Bollinger and Jody and all these guys, they're professionals. As John <laughs> says over there. It's, John, John Mill says over in England, 
old double boost. He says he's a mechanic that pisses about. I'm just an old damn machinist that pisses about. And I never have been a great welder. I'm actually going to show some welding today. Don't laugh, please. <laughs> so basically, I've got, you'll notice I got all the nuts laid up here. All I'm going to do, take my little Daytona MIG and I'm going to basically tack all these to start with. So. kind of get a little tack on them so they won't move. I put the nuts down and tighten them. So. Like I say, I will not claim to be a professional welder. I am not. Okay, let me get a little more welding done on these. and I'm not going to bore you with welding. So. I think that's going to stay on there good enough <coughs> for what we want. Uh, <coughs> I'm pretty confident I'll look at this if I see any places that's not tacked well enough like right here I might have to come back a little bit. But I think I've got it pretty much the way I want it. I think them nuts. See all I'm doing is adding a little extra you know and I'm just using nuts because it's handy. So. Okay what we did. Whoa I kicked it there. I'm sorry. What we did is we marked these with this, took us a black paint and dabbed on the bottom of it. And we're going to drill. And that's into the two before. That's plenty deep enough. So what we're doing now is we're drilling. Holes, and then we're going to go back and make these even bigger. So that was on the nut. See, I just laid these plates down there so they may not be perfectly square. But and you also got to understand, too, that the the plates are laid out for two different patterns. Two bolts for the swag table. Two bolts for the other. Oh. See, I drilled this one fairly deep. That's good enough. So these these wooden these holes are basically going to be like a bolt hole. This is a pretty thick piece of plywood. This table is made out of, by the way. It's about a half inch plywood for three quarters, but it's fairly thick. It would support this. If, see what I don't want, it would have been just fine. It's like my other vice over there. So let me get this last hole knocked out. And then we're going to take us a wood bit and go down in there part way or so. And this reason for this big a hole is allow again for a little misalignment. Because once I put this thing down, I'm going to run the tap through each one of these holes again. After I paint it and all that good job. I got the now I'm gonna get me a bigger wood bit and open these up a little bit. Okay, there's there's where we at. Now I'm gonna I'm not gonna screw it down. I'm gonna go ahead and then I'm gonna have to paint it, let it dry, and all that good stuff now. But that's what we've got. We've got it set there, and we this is what we wanted. It sets fairly flush. Some more once I pull the screws down, that'll finish it. So the plan here right now is I'm going to paint this thing and let it get it painted and it finishes up drying. Primer and paint it black. And then we're going to just put it right back down the bench and then we'll run all the screws and pull it down. So what that will do is just give us a good solid place there to set that. All those two different machines and they'll have be holes for the bolts and everything. So there we go. We got so far now we got to do is just paint her up. 
All right, we're going to give this thing a little primer here right quick. And the reason why you see me using gloves because it's windy and I can't hack the hole this. So. Rust-oleum primer on it. Let it dry, then we'll throw a little black paint on it later. And whatever I got, I got plenty of paint, so I might use gray. It don't really matter. It's just gonna go on my workbench. Okay. Make sure it don't rust no more. It's already rusted. Excuse my sorry welding on the nuts. There. I ain't no Tom. I ain't no Jody. And I dang sure ain't no uh, Jim Bowling. I can stick a little metal down on there. And it'll work. All right. Like I said, this is just going to be laying on my bench. This ain't no automotive paint job, thank you. It's just going to lay on my workbench. It'll probably be a beat place. There we go. We got a little coat of primer on her. And that ought to hold us for a while. All right, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to got, this is Walmart paint here, folks. This is El Cheapo Walmart. I don't know if I got enough to paint the whole front and back. It don't matter if the back's not painted because ain't nobody going to see it because it's going to reside. This, this home will be basically underneath the, you know, against the plywood. I just wanted to get rid of the rust on it. So we'll just shoot this with some black here and be done with it. If I got enough paint, I'll paint the back. Just because I can. This primer dried to the touch really quick. back on the table pretty dang quick. It'll be ready to be mounted. See this way, when it's all done, well said and done, see this will be part of my workbench. It'll just be a high spot, but this way I don't have nothing sticking up. And that's the good part. And then, but then again, as I need the, the saw or the tapping machine, they'll just bolt right to the back down on something sturdy. And it takes just a second to bolt it down with some quarter 20 bolts and hold her down. She's in place. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's neat. Yeah, you know, so this is kind of the idea I liked. I thought about it really before I've done it. The thing was, I didn't have enough material to do this. I'd have to buy some. I don't forgot where I got this plate at. I think I picked it up at a scrap yard somewhere a long time ago. May have been even give to me. I ain't caring how this looks, Foss. This has got a little black on it. With the wind blowing to it, it's really hard to paint this. I think this looks really good outside because the wind's really whistling. I don't really, I have painted a little bit in my shop, and I hate doing it. I get away with it, I don't paint so much. So, this side, I'm not here if I can The side that you're going to see, I really care about this side. I'm just going to get a little bit of that's all I care. I'm Okay, now I'll explain something. Good paint, uh, 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 truthfully, 
I, I'm bad, and I, I'll tell you a little story about painting. Uh, this, uh, I used to help people work on race cars a long time ago. We'd build roll cages and build working on a race car. And most of the time, old dirt track cars, mostly we call bomber cars or thunder and lightning, basically built on an old junk car. And so a lot of times you cut places out and just need to hit a spot here and there, you know, just to, just to cover up something. I'm going to tell you, this is going to go right here. We'll let that happen. That'll dry up and be good. Uh, my got still got some deals with the washer. It's not going right. Uh, I went in and checked on it a minute ago, so I'm going to have to, I guess, call the repairman. There's so many circuits. I've I done a Google search of so many repair circuits and stuff. time you chase your tail on this stuff, it's almost cheaper. To have. The guy comes out here for like $75 or something like that. And then he just charges you retail for the parts. So if he's not here a long time, you only got about $75 in it extra. And he fixed an ice maker for us. So he's probably what I'm going to do with that. All right, here we go. All right, there's a completed project. And it's all finished up, mounted to the table. So now you see, I don't lose no table space. Yes, I do have a few screws sticking up, but that's not a big deal. I ain't got studs up in there. So what we'll do, and I'll just I'll bring the drill catching machine over and show you the idea here. And just line it up. Drop the bolts in. So I can find the other bolt holes. And so I did drill a tap machine out just a hair there. I'm not going to run this thing down tight there, but to just show you. Okay, that's the that's for that. The same thing worked for the swag saw. The difference in the swag saw, it'd only be bolted here at the top with two bolts. But, um, so that way when I want to use my tapping machine, I just bolt it down right there. And that works pretty good. Let me kind of pull you back and give you a bigger view there. There we go. So that's how it's going to work in all. So, that's the, that's the project for the day. I hope you've enjoyed your visit to my shop here. This is Jim, and you always enjoy the videos. Please comment, rate, and subscribe because that keeps me going. Uh, I always try to keep something interesting. So, again, I appreciate all my subscribers, especially the newer ones who just signed on. We're trying to build this channel, just, you know, show a person out in the shop having fun. Again, Appreciate you watching. Appreciate the comments. Also, share with your friends that you have. You know, you got friends that's interested in such videos. Hey, tell them about me and have them come by and pay a visit. So you have a great day, and we'll see you when next time I decide to make one of these things.